everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video review, and today we're going to be doing my comic load for the week, and it is a massive comic load, uh, but we'll get through it quickly, don't don't worry. Um, in addition to this, I'm also going to be talking about how I'm going to incorporate question and answers into my normal videos, so stay tuned towards the end of the video, that's where I'll give you guys the details. So this week uh, is the largest week of the month for me. We got two new titles, including Justice League of America and um, Vibes. So got some stuff going on. And we might as well start where we always start, with a little bit of Batman in our life. That would be with Nightwing, issue number 17. Uh, you're going to find with some of the Batman issues, at least for the 17s, are going to be Fallout issues. Uh, this is the Fallout with the death of the family story. And Dick's just kind of... Dealing with all the trauma that he had to deal with and all the shit he had to go through. And while this is going on, uh, Robin is in the background kind of watching him and trying to help him out. And it says, Nightwing on a rampage. It's not really on a rampage. Not really. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good. Um, I do like the moments with Dick and Damien kind of just chilling out and flying around and doing their things. And I, I do kind of like the... The, the everyone telling Dick that everything's going to be all right, whether it's uh, Zuko, uh, what Sonya, or uh, whether it's Barbara, or whether it's Bruce, or so on and so forth. Uh, bad. Uh, the only bad is is in this is going to tie into Red Hood and the Outlaws is that um, there's not much internal dialogue for Nightwing, so I feel as though we don't really get to know exactly how much he's hurting. Where in Red Hood, that's the opposite. We got a lot of internal dialogue with Jason. Um, as for a Fallout issue, it was pretty good. I wouldn't uh, write home about anything in this, but uh, enjoyed it. The writing was good. The pace was okay. Uh, just It would have been nice to have that internal dialogue. It would have made a world of difference. Uh, 3.5 out of 5. Um, which will move us now to Red Hood and the Outlaws, which is the death of the family aftermath, I guess. Is that, is that what they're calling it? Well, that's what they're calling it here. Um, Jason is, once again, like Dick, dealing with the repercussions of what happened in um, Death of the Family. And he interacts with a lot of people. Starfire and Roy, of course, but uh, with Dick, with Damien, with Bruce, with Alfred kind of just getting a semblance of his life and also coming to terms with a lot of his relationships. It's kind of funny because he also addresses why Dick doesn't um, go outside and see Starfire. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good is I do like the uh, the friendship that has happened between Corey, Roy, and Jason. I feel It feels natural. It feels real. It... it, it they play off each other just so well. Uh, their personalities are all so dramatically different. And like I said, it just they play off each other so well. Uh, the internal dialogue is very nice here. I like how he goes to each and every single person and kind of talks to them about something. Uh, there's some funny moments in this, and it leads up to uh, kind of a cliffhanger of an ending. So does that very well. Uh, bad... I can't really think of any bad about this. This was a uh, standout issue. I'll give it a 5 out of 5. Red Hood and the Outlaws. Really enjoyed it. Next is Batwoman issue number 17. The end of the world's finest arc. So Batwoman and Wonder Woman finally go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Medusa. And uh, Flame Bird is not going to be called Flame Bird anymore. She now is called... Hawk Fire. Eh, it's okay. I'll deal with it. Um, her costume, however, is really badass looking. I know it was shown in the previous issue, but you get a little bit more of it in this issue. Um, it really does look pretty cool. A um, lot of action, a lot of fighting, and the climactic finish with Medusa. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, the presentation, as always, great in this, along with the art. Uh, nice twist at the end. I, I knew it was eventually going to happen, but it's nice that it, it did happen. Uh, and also a nice moment at the end with uh, Maggie and Kate. So we did get that. Um, dialogue was good. I think this closed up the comic very well. The story very well. 
bad is I felt as though Medusa was a little underplayed a bit. She didn't really fight them, per se. So it would have been nice if there was a little bit more of her versus Batwoman and Wonder Woman. And uh, Medusa's mom shows up and she's there, but I feel as though she doesn't impact the story that much. Uh, whether or not you should get it, yeah, it's a good issue. I enjoyed it. Uh, 3.5 out of 5. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a 3.5 out of 5. It really... No, I'll bump it up to a 4. It was a good issue. It ended off a good story arc. Uh, it's just those few minor things that I would have changed. So yeah, 4 out of 5. Catwoman, issue number 17. Let me save us some time here. Uh, what is happening in this comic? I do not even know anymore. Uh, what is happening in Catwoman? It, I feel is um, it's lost its place, big time. Um, and and I guess I pronounced her name wrong. It's Nocenti. Uh, she goes and does a fantastic issue for Katana, and it's like her Catwoman stuff is just it's not happening. What is happening in this issue? Uh, I did not enjoy this. Uh, Maybe it was the uh, at first I thought, hey, maybe it's because you're falling asleep and you're not able to stay awake. But then I go back and I read the issue again, and I'm like, what is happening in this issue? There's no story. The dialogue's a little choppy. Um, the art's nice. I do enjoy the art, but yeah, it's just kind of there. Two out of five. Catwoman really wasn't good at all this week. Um, so on to Birds of Prey, issue number 17. So Black Canary's Canary Cry is going a little crazy. Just a little crazy. And uh, while this is going on, she still doesn't trust uh, Strikes. Is that her name? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, the, the new member, the Corval member, which I really should remember her name. Yeah, Strikes. S-T-R-I-X. Let's, let's add an X instead of a CKS. Anyways, um, so basically it's the Birds of Prey trying to survive an attack uh, from some evildoers while also at the same time trying to come to kind of some closure of how their team is going to work. And this team has taken a, a quite a bit of a turn from being, you know, Katana, Poison Ivy, Starling, and Black Canary... Batgirl, Black Canary, Starling, um, Condor, and Strikes. Uh, I do like this new team. I I, I think it's good. Uh, and I also like the uh, twists and stuff that they're doing with Starling, uh, with Waller. A bad, uh, no real bad about this at all. Uh, this was a good issue. Um, and it's going to go into Mr. Freeze next. That's going to be their next opponent. Yeah, I, I can't really think of anything wrong about this. It didn't blow me away, maybe, but it was enjoyable, so I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. Next is Savage Wolverine, issue number 2. So basically, Wolverine and Shauna, is that how you say her name, are still in the Savage Land. Some dude shows up. I don't know who this dude is. He acts like a robot, floats around. Maybe it's just because I'm not as in-depth with Marvel as some other people. He keeps on talking to someone named Calvin. Maybe someone can help me out on this. Um, putting that aside, uh, basically it's Wolverine and Shauna kind of just surviving in the Savage Land. Plain, flat, and simple. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, I think Shauna and Wolverine play off each other very nicely. They're funny with each other. Uh, the art is beautiful. I really do like the art. And, um, some good action is that I don't know who this robot guy is. And if it's someone that, if he is a robot, he's probably something else. Again, my ignorance when it comes down to some Marvel stuff. But, um, uh, for someone that doesn't know all the characters in Marvel, I, I'm, I'm quite confused on who this dude is. And it would have been nice if I had a little bit more information on him. Just a little bit more. Uh, but that's really the big bad. That and Wolverine was swearing way too much. I know Wolverine probably has a foul mouth on him, but not that foul. Uh, but no, on, on a whole, I will give this a 4 out of 5. Good issue. Uh, I am enjoying Savage Wolverine. Uh, I think it, it's a fun little side mission, side, uh, side little 
story. I will be picking up the normal Wolverine series when it does come out or when it does get relaunched. But yeah, Savage Wolverine is pretty fun. Moving on. Uh, so we got some Green Lantern stuff. And I'm going to kind of fly through these real quick. Uh, Green Lantern, um, Wrath of the First Lantern begins, y'all, in Green Lantern issue number 17. Uh, basically, this is our real introduction to the First Lantern, who he is, where he's from, kind of, and what's his power. He basically can, like, he's like an emotional vampire, I think they called him. Uh, he sucks off of the histories and emotions of people. Um, in addition to that, Black Hand is fighting against Simon Baz in an interesting fight, to say the least. And uh, they need Hal Jordan back. They need Hal Jordan back. Um, there's also some twists and turns here and there, especially during the fight with uh, Black Hand and Simon Baz. There was some interesting moments that happened uh, that involve Abin Sor. So that was pretty fun. But yeah, this is more or less a setup issue that also leads into the other issues. Um, it does have kind of a twist of an ending, which I'm interested to see where it goes from there. Um, hopefully we'll get Hal back. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, good, I thought it did a good job at giving us this first lantern. Um, showing us who he is, what he does. I also like the Simon Baz black hand moments in this. And I do like the twist at the end. Bad as I think the beginning, while it was okay, it could have been handled a little bit better. Uh, but other than that, this was a good issue. 4.5 out of 5. Enjoyed it. Pick it up. Now, with Green Lantern Core and um, Green Lantern New Guardians, these are the next issues in the Wrath of the First Lantern. Part 2 and Part 3. Basically, both these issues are just the First Lantern taking them and analyzing the lives and doing different scenarios of how their lives could have happened and feeding off their emotional energy when this happened. I'm not going to go too much into it. It's kind of more or less a this is your life for each character, um, which does answer a, which does answer a few questions uh, continuity-wise of what's in continuity and what's not. Uh, the Green Lantern Core one, I'll give a 3 out of 5, where the Kyle Rayner one, the New Guardian, I'll give a 4 out of 5. Uh, are they necessary? No. You could actually skip over these two issues and not have to worry about the First Lantern story. Okay? Moving on to TMNT, issue number, what are we, 19 now? Yeah, 19, wow. So, basically, it is the Turtles planning, uh, working with the space aliens, I forget their names, uh, and Dr. Honeycutt to go up against Krang. And uh, this issue is freaking awesome. I'm not going to reveal too much about it. Uh, five out of five, though. Uh, the Turtles basically work towards all their strengths. Leo being a leader, Raph kind of being the roughneck, um, Mikey being kind of, I don't know, Mikey's kind of a supportive character in this, but uh, Donnie being the smart, techie guy. And even in the extreme circumstances that they're in, uh, they're still shining as characters. In addition to that, Kari uh, uh, gets a little bit of time in this, and she was great too. Uh, five out of five. TMNT was really awesome this week. And you know the thing about this that I liked is that this was supposed to be a setup issue, and usually setup issues I don't care for. Uh, for a setup issue, it does a fantastic job. It's one of the best setup issues I've read in a while. Pick it up. If you're not reading TMNT, you're missing out on a whole lot. Because uh, TMNT is pound for pound one of the best comics out there. You just got to pick it up and read it. You just got to pick it up and read it. On to Superman Action Comics issue number 17. Uh, I was wondering what happened to this, but I guess it got moved to the uh, third week instead of the first week. So basically, it's Superman versus Super Doomsday. And um, we get some flashbacks, particularly with Superman and his father. Uh, we also get a bit of the Legion in this too, and how... They kind of all tied together in a way, kind of. Uh, Grant Morrison is doing what he does best in this, in that he's uh, impressing me with his writing and confusing the shit out of me at the same time. Um, which I guess I'll get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you should get it. 
good is the moments between Clark and his father were very nice. Um, the art was really good. Uh, it's re uh, it's Morales, right? At least for some of it. Uh, the art was good. Uh, and things aren't quite as misguided-ish as they were in previous issues. Misguided, that's a bad way to say it. Uh, it's not quite as messy as in previous issues. Bad, I don't know where the story is going, and I don't really care for the main villain, this uh, Lord Benedrix of Tibix. Maybe you guys can pronounce that for me. This dude, I really don't care for him as a villain. Uh, he doesn't do anything for me at all. Um, on the whole, this issue was good. I kind of want to see a conclusion to the story sometime soon. And maybe a little bit more information about Super Doomsday and what exactly he is. Uh, the ending was really cool, though. I, d I did like how it ended because there's a character that shows up. And not to tell you who it is, but there's a character that shows up and uh, they help out Superman. And it's not someone that you would think. Uh, the Super Doomsday, though, you do get to see their face. But again, I'm curious to see exactly how that's going to be played off. Um, on a whole, I will give this a... I had to flip through it again just to remember what the face looked like. Um, on a whole, I'll give this a... Th Teetering on a 3.5 to 4. I'm going to stick with the 3.5. Fun. Interesting. Um, it's just a... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just not invested in the villain. Maybe that's just me personally. But uh, there's some good stuff in this. Time travel stuff in m multiple dimensions and high concept stuff is great. But if it's not being presented as well as it should be and it's not in this, it can be a little... It can be uh, bogging. Uh, Supergirl issue number 17. This is Supergirl versus Wonder Woman in a pretty fun badass fight. Um, all I have to say is, yeah, it's a throwdown issue. But you know what's good about this? Finally, Supergirl comes to her senses. Uh, that's a bit of a spoiler, sorry. But, uh, finally, Supergirl comes to her senses. Um, not gonna go into too much detail because it's just a fight issue. It is a long-ass fight issue. The dialogue is good. There's some, uh... The, actually, you know, this issue was pretty fun. Um, I'm just going through it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. I mean, it's a fight issue. Uh, you know, yeah, It's a fight issue. It's, there's some plot moving across. Actually, there's a lot of plot moving across. You know what? I'm going to bump this up. I'm giving it a 5 out of 5. This issue was really fun. I really did enjoy it. The fight was fun. Uh, finally, Supergirl has come to her senses. The plot moves, so and the dialogue was good. The pacing was good. Yeah, this this deserves a five out of five. Supergirl. Moving on to Amethyst, Sword and Sorcery. Um, it's sad to read this comic now because it's such a good comic, um, and it's getting canceled, which is just absolutely pathetically bad. Um, basically. Amethyst gets to learn about her father. He's from the House of Turquoise. Um, she gets to learn what's his deal, why he was never brought up beforehand. And while this is all going on, the House of Onyx strikes. Uh, can Amethyst defeat the House of Onyx in a quite a deadly fight? Because these guys are assassins. They don't play around. They're like Ezio Auditore. They're going to go crazy on you. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. I'm going to just say this up front. Everything's good about this. What's bad is the fact that I'm not enjoying it as much as I should because the comic's getting canceled. It's a damn shame when you get a comic like this that you don't think was going to be good. It turns out to be a fantastic comic and it's just not going to survive. Um, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. But uh, yeah, it's, it's sad. It's sad to see comics go. It's sad to see comics end. That's the big thing. Uh, Captain America, issue number four. What are we we on for? So Captain America and Ian finally find um, a robot back home. 
And we also get a good chunk of this is a flashback to when Captain America's mother was sick, too. And we get to see how he kind of coped with that and what lessons she instills in him and what he has to do to survive. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but yeah, uh, Captain America finds a roadmap home. Um, and he also shows what's on his chest to the little kid, which is kind of creepy, to say the least. And while this is going on, I don't know who this is on the cover, but they show up and apparently they want to kill Captain America. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, I do like the art in this. I do like the flashback scene, which was nice. It's, it's touching. Um, and I do like the fact that him and Ian are kind of figuring a way out. Bad, I don't know who this villain is at the end. I don't know much about them. I should. Uh, I'm looking right now to see if I miss their names or something. But, yeah. Uh, um, Jet Black Princess Zola. Uh, the, the villain didn't make much of an impression on me. Uh, and I felt as though, although we got some answers in the story, it really doesn't feel as though the plot got moved forward too, too much. Other than the end, which I didn't even enjoy the end. So, uh, on a whole though, it still gets a 3 out of 5. Captain America is one of the better series from the, uh, Marvel Now. Not the best issue here, but it's still worth picking up. Three out of five. Uh, DC Universe Presents Arsenal, issue number 17. This comic is also coming to a close, I think, in like two issues. Is it issue 19 or is it issue 18? I forget. Uh, but yeah, basically this is uh, Arsenal gets captured. He has to get out of it. He shows why his name is Arsenal. Because he can take any weapon and use it. Um, that's the basic gist. Ar Arsenal gets himself into a pickle and he has to get himself out. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Good, I like, I, I really do like how they've taken Roy Harper and changed the character. Yeah, it's sad that he doesn't have a daughter and that he's not a single father, so and so forth, and kind of fitting that archetype. But he's become a much more charismatic character. I think he's more in tune with his past in a positive way, not in a negative way. I felt as though a lot of writers would use his substance abuse as a crutch almost when it comes down to writing. But I think it's handled very well in the New 52 and in this issue too. I, again, I, like I said, I like how he's actually arsenal in this. The concept that he can take anything, even like broken glass, and turn it into a weapon. Or like a dime. He takes a dime and he uses it as a weapon. He's arsenal. Uh, which is really cool. The R is pretty good in this. Um, and I do like the ending a lot. Which ties into what I said of Red Hood and the Outlaws. I really do like this kind of family that Red Hood and uh, Arsenal and Starfire have created. And it's a really nice friendship. Uh, five out of five. This was a really fun issue. If you're a fan of Roy Harper, pick this up. It's really good. On to the first new comic of the month and that would be vibe issue number one or justice league of america's vibe just yeah america's vibes um i recommend reading this after reading justice league of america it's not necessary i just think it works a little bit better basically we got the um history of vibe in this vibe is 18 years old uh, for those of you that don't know who vibe is vibe was a character created in the 80s for the justice league of America when it was the Justice League of Detroit. Uh, he was like a breakdancing hip hop kind of superhero. Where, whereas I never had a problem with him. I never kind of grew attached to him either. A lot of people didn't care for him. Uh, which is surprising on why they bring him in. Uh, my only gripe that I have with Vibe is the fact that he's getting a comic and you know, Cyborg isn't. But I really shouldn't hold that against Vibe. I should hold that against DC. Um, it just perplexes me why he hasn't got a comic. And saying that, I want to go into his comic uh, open-minded and I want to kind of give him a chance. So we get to figure out Vibe, where his powers come from. Uh, Vibe was affected by a boom tube that opened up. Actually, the very first boom tube that opened up on Earth and he got caught in it and now he can see certain frequencies and look through dimensions and he can create vibrations and 
hit people with them. And various various different other uh, powers. A very vague power that can do a lot, but basically he can control vibrations in the world. It makes sense when you read it. Uh, and we find that it also makes him kind of disattached from himself and the world around him. Uh, the, his big beef is with parademons in general because, while well, a tragedy happened that involved parademons. And we find out Argus is trying to recruit him right away. Uh, so, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, good. The art is... Someone checking. The art is... Um, I like the art in this. I think it has a good feel to it. Uh, vibe as a character, it's kind of bland, but I do like him. He's kind of that friend you have that really doesn't talk much and doesn't do much, but he's cool. He's cool. Uh, I like his powers. I like how it's tied to the dark side event and the boom tubes, and I like how a lot of the superheroes kind of came out of that event, so I do like that. Um, the ending was very cool. I do like uh, the twist that they throw at the end, which will involve dark side which will involve dark side uh bad the only thing that's bad in this is that vibe as a character i like him but he doesn't have much personality he's kind of just there i mean he has personality but not as much as other characters or as much as he could uh whether or not you should get it, you know vibe impressed me enough to make me want to pick up the second issue four out of five was a good issue. Pick it up. Um, so we have three more comics left. Wonder Woman, Justice League, and Justice League of America. So we'll move on to Wonder Woman next. Uh, Wonder Woman, issue number 17. So Ares shows up. And everyone thinks Ares is going to kick the shit out of Wonder Woman and kill her. But see, that's not what Ares wants to do. Ares sees Wonder Woman as his greatest student, but also his greatest failure. Um, but he promises to do something for Wonder Woman. He promises to help her get Zola's kid back. That means he promises to take her to Demetrius Dimension, where the betrayer, the messenger, Hermes is. Uh, what happens when Wonder Woman and Hermes has their first face-to-face -face since the climatic ending of issue number 12? But you're just going to have to read and see. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, good. Uh, War. Ares. Awesome in this. Awesome. I really like how he's kind of a sympathetic character. Um, kind of an old dude that really doesn't like his position. Because he's kind of grown old in it. Um, him and Wonder Woman bounce off each other so very well. Uh, Character-wise, I do like the new take that they've done with Ares. Uh, I do like the old Ares, but the new one's pretty cool, too. Uh, great twist at the end, and uh, great dialogue, as always. Bad is... Uh, the art's not bad, and they try the best they can to be like Cliff Chang's art, but I do miss Cliff Chang's art. Uh, whether or not you should get it, definitely. Uh... Five out of five. Wonder Woman continues to be one of the best of the new 52. Another comic that if you're not picking up, you're missing out. Next um, is Justice League of America, issue number one. This is the big one that came out. And I got two copies. I got the regular copy, and then I got the Massachusetts one, because I love the mass. Go figure. Uh, so anyways, uh, this is... For the most part, without giving away too much, Stephen Trevor and Amanda Waller sitting down and talking about the Justice League and creating their own Justice League, the Justice League of America, to basically combat the Justice League. Uh, and this issue is them discussing the various different recruits, what the recruits have to offer, and what they have to offer the recruits. That's the issue. Um... Without going into too much detail, it's just showing each character and why they would be part of the Justice League. Some of them are like, shit, I'll join the Justice League right away. And some of them are kind of like, well, you're kind of black and male me in a way, so sure, I'll join. Uh, good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, yeah, I don't want to reveal too much, but it's mostly just introducing each character. I think second issue is where this shit's really started to get moving. Uh, good is I like how everyone is in, uh, I like how everyone's portrayed in this. 
Catwoman's awesome in this. I like how they portray Katana as one of the deadliest assassins. A Martian Manhunter. Love him. Uh, Hawkman. Love him. Uh, and Stephen Trevor, I think, most of all, stands out really well in this. I think he's the star of the comic. Uh, Stargirl also has um, a nice background, too. The little bits that they gave to her. Uh, two is I do like how Amanda Waller and um, Stephen Trevor are kind of match up Justice League for Justice League. Who could take on who? Although I disapprove of some of their choices. Uh, for example, they have like Martian Manhunter versus Superman. Logical choice. They would go up against each other. But then they have like Katana versus Wonder Woman and Batman versus Catwoman. Batman and Wonder Woman would mop the floor with both of them. And I like Catwoman and I like Katana. They would mop the floor with them. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I do like that comparison. I think each character gets their moment in the sun here. Everyone gets a chance to shine. Uh, bad. Can't really think that there's any bad. I'm not quite ready to give this a 5 out of 5. But I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. Just shy. But this was a really good issue. I, I am definitely looking forward to JLA in the future. And finally, ending off would be the regular Justice League issue number 17. Concluding the Throne of Atlantis story. So, basically, um, it's the Justice League versus Atlantis versus the Trench. And Aquaman has to make a decision, the only decision that can help stop Ocean Master. It's a decision that he doesn't want to do, but it will change the foundation of Aquaman. In addition to that, at the end of this comic, uh, Batman has to make a decision with the fellow Justice Leaguers, which will change the foundation of the Justice League. Um, and that's the basic gist of the story. Uh, and they also have to go up against the person that betrayed Aquaman. Someone that was really, really bad. Who did really, really bad things. And deserves a little spanking. Good, bad, whether or not you should get it. Uh, good. Art was fantastic. Uh, dialogue was great. The fight between Ocean Mass and Aquaman was awesome. The Justice League. Just seeing, like, the art. Just seeing Justice League flying was pretty cool. Uh, the ending was really cool. I like how the ending was. It was uh, cliffhangers and a few twists here and there. Uh, interesting to see how things are going to get played out in the future. And I'm really excited for the next issue of Aquaman and also the next issue of Justice League. Uh, the Justice League is going to be changing. For ill or for good, it's changing and I'm excited. Um, I love the Core 7, but we'll see where the Justice League is going to go from here. Bad. None. Uh, this ended a, a great story arc. Uh, Throne of Atlantis proves to me and proves to... I think everyone, what the Justice League should be. Larger in life characters and larger in life situations dealing with those situations. This is like Atlantis declaring war on the world. That's a pretty larger in life situation. And the Justice League doing the best they can to stop them. Um, so, yeah, 5 out of 5. This issue was really good. Um, so, yeah, that is the comics for this week. What comes out on top? Now, there's a lot of comics that stand out. Wonder Woman, um, TMNT, Justice League. Uh, without going too, too much into it, I would have to say Justice League is still the comic that gets uh, pick of the week. TMNT is so close, but Justice League was just, was just so good. Uh, as for my... Just wondering. Okay. As for how Q&As are going to work now. So what I'm going to do is at the end of each one of these videos, I'm going to take questions that you guys leave me. And I'm going to answer them. And a certain amount. I'm not going to do a huge amount. Maybe like 10 or so. Uh, we'll see. Depends on how much you guys ask. Uh, and how much time I have. And then I'll just answer the questions. Here are where you can post your uh, questions. For now on, I will take any questions posted in my regular comic pull list videos. So this video here, where I review weekly comics, post your question, and then in the next week, I will answer those questions then. If your question is not answered right away, I'm saving it for the next one. 
I'll try the best I can to get as many questions in. Maybe I'll get them all in. Maybe there'll be only a couple questions, so it'll be easier for me. But if you have a question for the next video, post it here. And um, not to be inconvenient, but I'm only going to accept questions from on this video, from these videos, the, the comic club ones. There's some people online that can only ask questions via Facebook. I'll, I'll allow those. But for the most part, just on these videos, okay? Because then next week I can answer the questions. Sounds good? Okay. So uh, ask away. And also give me your opinions on the comics for this week. Uh, this is Andrew saying peace out for now.